I'm going to try to try to deal with this topic and uh, try to make some sense out of it from some of the research that we've done uh, before uh, our work with uh, Fry and some of the research that we have done with Fry and subsequently. Okay, and I'm going to acknowledge that some of this work is supported was done by Song Ru, Hai Jin Wang, Marie Sharp, and Dave Schroeder from uh, Alberta and Alberta Environment and Sustainable Resource Development. The issue of lodgepole pine. Most of our lodgepole pine in this part of the world, in Alberta, northern British Columbia, is heavily serotonous. It, uh, most of the cones, most of the cones, will stay closed, and uh, we expect fire to be a major player in this system. Um, and that's the the serotony is a is a major factor in terms of in terms of uh, fire. So if you have commonly have fire as the major major disturbance agent, you'll get serotonous cones by evolution. It brings you there. And so you have this system: closed cones, and they stay closed on the trees. Um, and this resin bond needs to be heated to open up. And the second thing that's going on in our system is that we've got thick feather moss layers. And there are absolutely terrible seed beds. And, and these systems are usually dark without uh, some sort of disturbance that kills the tree. They're very dark systems. So that we have no seed in most of our systems, and or relatively little, and it's dark, and we've got a terrible seed bed. This seed bed is too coarse. Uh, the seeds will land in it. They'll probably germinate. They live for two weeks until the first uh, good drought, and then uh, they're gone because they dehydrate and they're, they're dead. Or they fall into a crack deep in and they germinate, and it's too, the, the cotyledons are exposed below the level of the feather moss, and they're dead. So that takes them out of the system. So. Fire is a very good system for this. It uh, cleans up the feather moss very nicely, and uh, we get massive recruitment of lodgepole pine. This is how we, we see the pure, pure lodgepole pine stands come back, because we have both a massive release of seed as well as a great seed bed that's being produced, and we get great, great uh, lodgepole pine regeneration. On, and that's how we get on most of our pure logical pine stands coming back with that, with that recurring signal. And we know, we know how to manage that. We know how to manage that silviculturally by uh, slash management. And uh, we keep the, keep the cone bearing slash on the site, drag, put some drags through it. The drags uh, expose uh, decomposed uh, duff. And, uh, and they push, reposition the cones close to the ground, and the cones open because it's har warmer right at the ground surface. It's a great system. We use it over and over again. So here's this, here's this uh, decomposed duff, and a uh, great seed bed, and it's good enough that the uh, seeds won't, germ won't dehydrate in the first month after germination. So they keep going. Now, lodgepole pine comes along. It does, a, it does a, a little bit of a tailspin, or puts us in a bit of a tailspin in terms of, in terms of this system, because we have we have death of serotonous populations without the without the signal of uh, of uh, opening the cones. So we wanted to actually look at this. Well, really, what happens to the seed? So we we Francois Test. I should be putting his name up at the top as well. Francois Test and I, uh, and Simon Landhauser, we, we looked at the whole system of, of uh, what happens to that aerial seed bank. There's about 30 million, million seeds in a typical lodgepole pine stand sitting up in the canopy uh, waiting, 30 million per hectare sitting up in the canopy waiting to, for something to happen to them. Okay, so we have this aerial seed bank. And we hypothesized a number of different things. We wanted to see how many of them actually, actually have, are open directly. How, is there a loss of serotony? And I'll show you some data on this in a minute. 
is there loss of serotony in the dead stance? And indeed, there appears to be. And so I'll show you how much it is. It's not, it's not a huge amount, but it's, it's significant. There's also cone droppage. Uh, cone droppage, and we can figure out how fast the cones are coming down from the canopy during that, uh, during that period after the, the, the mortality. And there's cone droppage for a number of different, different factors, a number of different ways. So the cones then land on the surface, and things happen to the cones on the surface. Or the seed, they, the cones are, the seed is spread as individual seeds drifting down from the, from the canopy. And uh, they would land in a temporary seed bank. We, I don't view this as a, a permanent seed bank. It's not like uh, a seed bank species. It's a, it's a temporary seed bank because we have a whole series of little beasts that love to eat these, these seeds sitting on the surface. Or they germinate very quickly, one or the other. Then we have the surface cones. Cones laying, closed cones, mostly closed cones or par partially open cones perhaps, sitting on the surface. And so what happens to these? So we're, we're, we're going to ask these questions, go through a, through a, a, a system of looking at these, these questions. And uh, we're looking at how long the cones actually last if they, they get buried in the soil, in the, in the feather moss. So cones will actually go into the feather moss with closed cones and they will, they will, will stay there. We started this work about, f about f five years ago and we wanted to look at uh, stuff that was already well advanced. So we went to Northern British Columbia, went to the Fort St. James area with populations of heavily serotonous populations of, of pine that are very similar to what we, what we have in Alberta. And we also have deep feather mosses in, those, in that same forest. So we, we wanted to work on that system. So what we did is we wanted to determine if canopy sea release, after the, the canopy sea release and the mechanisms and the model, the temporal changes in the canopy and forest forest sea banks and their viability after the mountain, pump, mountain pine beetle outbreak. Okay, so we've got, we've got uh, stands that look like, look like this or, um, or in this, in this area, in the Fort St. James area, they were, we were looking at stands that were actually uh, between three and six years after mountain pine beetle attack. And they have more uniform, uniform kinds of attack in, in British Columbia than seems to be being carried out in Alberta where the, the, the attacks seem to dribble on for, for uh, five, six years in some cases. So we looked at we looked at cone opening on on the trees. We felled a bunch of trees that had both up from either living trees, from uh, living trees or dead trees in these stands, and and looked at the cone opening on the trees themselves. And so we scored them and, and we counted up and tallied up how many how many open cones there were on these trees, and uh, see if the serotony is actually being lost. And so here's some of the data that we did collect in this area. So we went to, we went to red and gray phase stands. Now the red were three years old, at th roughly three years after the, the, the primary attack. The gray were six. And we looked at, we looked at six-year-old cones in terms, six-year-old cones in all cases, uh, looking at how many of the cones were open. So we looked at, we tried to find uh, living, li li live trees in the, in the red phase. These were live residual trees of the same size. Live residual trees in the gray phase. They're about 90, 95% closed yet on live trees in these stands where these six, six year old cones, we counted back, six year old cones are still, still uh, uh, closed. Now if you go into the red phase, they're dropped down to about 80 percent, 80 percent still closed. So just by killing the tree, there's been a loss in serotony. So the cones are opening up on these dead trees. And in the gray, gray phase, it's switched over so that about 60 percent of them are closed when they're 
in that stage, in the old gray stage. So we wanted to then switch over to look at what happens to the cones themselves on the canopy. We hypothesized that the red phase were going to lose a large number of the cones. They're going to come down during the red phase because of crown friction. There will be a period when the, cone, when the stem of the tree is still highly flexible and it's going to bend in the wind. The canopy though in the, in the, the last part of the, of the green phase um, and the beginning of the red is very brittle. So branches are going to be very susceptible to breakage in the red phase. So we will, we hypothesize we're going to lose a large number of the cones, they'll come on, they'll be on the ground during this phase. And then they hit the, the forest floor, the other issue is when they hit the forest floor, what happens to them? What percentage of them are going to open up when they're on the forest floor? And that's another, another thing that happens. So we, we hypothesize that many of them will open up, but not all of them. Because some of them are, there's a, there's a different kind of uh, heat regime that there would be in a, in a clear cut because it's still partial shade. Okay? So we get some of them opening up because of that soil heating. And indeed in the red phase, we went and did surveys of cones on the ground. And we call this cone release, but it's cone breakage and landing on the ground. That's what we're counting here. And in the green, there's about, about uh, uh, I guess it's 5,000 cones per hectare laying on the ground. And you got almost triple that in the red phase. So there's a whole pile of them just are on the ground, and they're in that phase. So the, the canopy, the canopy uh, seed bank is de being depleted very quickly during the red phase, and it's going to the ground. Some of that is opening up, and as soon as it opens up, it lands on feather mosses, as Dave, Dave said, it's, they're probably not, not in a very happy place, or the mice get them. In the gray phase, we we're, we're still see some of them, but uh, not nearly as many as in the red. Okay, twig breakage, that's the big thing. Okay, cone opening, forest floor cone opening. And so we see any the cones that are on the on the ground they will open up. Forty percent of them are, are open in the in the green and the red phase, and then they get a higher percentage of them opening. Tends to be a higher percentage. I don't think it's significant. These are these are ninety-five percent confidence intervals. It's close to significant uh, in the gray. So more tends to be more opening in the, on the, of the ground cones on the in the gray phase. So we think that most of those seeds are consumed or making some assumptions that the squirrels are going to eat about a million of them per year, a million seeds per year. And uh, they cut, they bring some of the seeds down, the cones down too, they, with their cutting, cutting regime. So squirrels are, 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 are a big game in this, or, or a significant component of this seed depletion that uh, we have in this system. The other place that seed can go, the cones, cones can be buried. And we see a burial of cones. Um, some of them that we, and we've dug, the, dug up cones, we've done pits in the forest floor looking at cones that are in the moss or below the moss and figure out, well, are, is the seed still there? What, uh, what, what's happened to that seed? So we've, we're, we looked at this in terms of in terms of how well these seeds are are uh, surviving, and I'll show you some data here in a minute. So we have embedded cones, and then we have buried cones. Where well, this is an embedded cone, that's when we when I talk about the survival of the seed. In the red phase, we see a lot of embedded cones. A lot of these cones are are going into the mount, into the moss. They're dropping into, into the moss. There's a lot of them, so many of them are coming down and they're, they're being engulfed by the moss. And then uh, we start digging them up and we find, in the gray phase, we find uh, below the moss, we have lots of them that are fully buried. And they're, they're sitting into the, in that, in that uh, system. Okay, 
So let's go back and look at this thing, and I'll show you uh, some final data on it. The seed, the seed bank. So we've got we've got all this 30 million seeds up here, and some of them are coming down, being spread uniformly. Others are being released in cones, and then we've got a buried cone bank. So by year six. Uh, 25 or 30 million seeds, and I guess uh, 25 is the right answer, according to this anyway. Um, we're down to about 40%, 40 percent of it is, is off of the canopy by year six. And uh, it's, you, most of that's probably uh, wasted, as, as, essentially. But there is some of it actually goes into that, into that buried cone bank in, in the forest floor. Some of that is in there, and, and if you didn't do anything, it, that's gone. It's, it's gradually being depleted. But there is an opportunity to bring some of that back to life, perhaps with some, some site treatments. Perhaps. Maybe a fire would bring some of it back to life. We don't really know uh, what would happen if you, uh, you, did a, you did a burn. You might be able to bring some of that back out. Um, so that's, those are some of the, the conclusions that we have, is that it's going, and uh, by year 10, I don't know how much will still be in the canopy. So 40, 45% still, still, uh, still is, uh, of the canopy scenes remain, while 6% of the cones are, are buried in the forest floor. Now if you look at the seed viability in the serotonous pine systems, uh, you look at the germination capacity, if you collect these cones and, and score them out by age and age them, the cones themselves are actually quite, if they're closed, uh, we've got live uh, cones from live trees, cones from dead trees, and uh, these are uh, dead co closed cones and dead partially open cones. So closed and partially open. So when you partially open a cone, what actually happens to it? What happens to the seed that's in the other half of the cone that's not opened? And we, we did some tests to try to tease this out to see whether or not that seed is still, still uh, viable, if it actually hurt it. And one of the interesting things is on this, this graph here, this is the live partially opened. And you actually had lower germination, which we gave, gave us a a lot of puzzles. We, we scratched our head about that for quite a bit. Why, why those would be, uh, would be more likely to, de to decline in viability. But in general, in general, you're getting 80% uh, survival up to about 15 years in these, in these serotonous cones. So you got really good survival in, the, in that system up to about 15 years, then it, then it starts to go a little steeper in terms of its, in terms of its loss of viability. But there's still some viable cones at year 20 and 25 and 30. So it's still, if you can, if you can keep them up off of the ground for that long, and that's a, that's a big if, uh, in, the dead, in the dead trees, uh, then, uh, then uh, they would still be viable. So because remember, these are, we're going backwards on the canopy. That doesn't mean the cones are going to live 30 years up in the canopy, that they would remain there. So the embedded cones, and we want to look at the survival of these things, the buried cones. So that we still have, we still have pretty good germination capacity on embedded, embedded uh, cones and embedded partially open cones even. Um, but it declines when you start to bury them. And you know, these are presumably older, and uh, but still pretty amazing. You can take a cone, stick it in the ground in that humid condition in the ground for uh, presumably eight or ten years, and you've still got 50% survival uh, or germination capacity of that seed. It's pretty darn good. It's it's just you, and potentially you could bring that stuff back to life by some sort of treatment. But it won't come back naturally because it's it's once it's 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 on its path towards decomposition and death. Okay, half of the conclusions: half of the canopy is is on the ground by year six, roughly in that in that ballpark. Cones open uh, on the dead trees faster than on living trees. Branch breakage, increased cone opening, and squirrel predation are, are big factors in this. 
Okay. And switch over to another topic, and we're we're going to talk about uh, about some of these dead stands and whether or not we can rejuvenate them by by burning. And uh, this is a project that was established at uh, Archer Lake in northeastern northeastern Alberta. Uh, it was it was set up by Alberta Sustainable Resource Development and FB Innovations, and they burned a whole bunch of paired paired plots where they where they uh, had they girdled trees they girdled trees prior to uh, prior to burning let them go into a, a red phase at, at, at year three and then uh, then burnt that burnt them split them in half burned a part of the girdle stand and left part of it as a control so we went into this stand at, at three years after the burn and did some further further work on that. So it's six years, about six years after the burning, that we are doing these evaluations. And so you can see some of the data that, uh, that was generated from that, um, that work. Dave Schroeder was, uh, was instrumental in getting, getting us access to this and, and working on this. So we have prescribed fire as a possibility for this kinds of systems. Um, in that red phase, 